Hi, I'm Nathaniel Pierce, and welcome to my presentation, an Altium designer of how to group, edit, and select objects in the PCB editor. The first thing that you need to do for group editing in Altium Designer is to select the objects. And there are a variety of different ways that you can do that. You can select objects in the main editing area. You can select them in the PCB panel. You can select them in the filter panel, or you can use the pre-selection filter in the properties panel. Or if you'd like to select ob objects in the main editing area, you can just right click on the object type that you like and use the pop-up selection menu item, find similar objects. So we're gonna go through a few of these ways to select objects and then how to edit them globally all at once. There are a few different selection techniques that you can use from the edit menu bar option, but you know the, the selection menu bar option is used so often that the, they have its own shortcut key so that you can just click once in the main editing area and, and press the S key and it'll bring up this little selection menu. And then you've got some handy tools that you can see within that menu. And I'll do a demonstration of these uh, features in just a few minutes. But also in the schematic and the PCB uh, properties panel, you'll see that there's what's called a pre-selection filter. And by default, everything is turned on, of course, but you can selectively choose whatever object set that you want to select. Now, one of the handiest ways to select objects as well is in the PCB panel itself. All right, and of course this is in the PCB editor. And right underneath the panel header where it says nets, there's a drop down menu. And there are all kinds of object types that you can select in there. I'll do a demo of that, of course, as well as some of these other features as, as well as we'll see in a few minutes here. The PCB felt filter panel, its function is also to select or highlight objects, but one of the strengths that it has is that there is a create rule PCB filter panel button in there that immediately allows you to create a design rule from the object set that you wish to select. And then if you right click on any object in the main editing area, you'll see a, a pop up menu and right at the top it says find similar objects. And this will allow you to select all the objects in the main editing area. And then if you like, you can edit them all at once in the properties panel. <clears throat> now there's a few different ways to edit objects, of course, you can select them in the main editing area, like I said, and then edit them in the properties panel. But whatever object type you select in the properties panel, you'll always see in the upper left of the properties panel, the object type that you've selected. And in the lower left, you'll always see the number of objects that you've selected. There's also some batch replacement commands that you can use from the schematic editor. If you want to replace some text, you can use this uh, right click and batch replace. And you'll also see that there's an additional tab on there for uh, entering a formula if you like to replace objects. Now, most powerful of all, actually, is the PCB list panel. It has a lot of columns in it because it's displaying a lot of information. The function of the PCB list panel is to select or edit any object in the PCB editor. And of course, <clears throat> these panels exist in the schematic editor too, right? The properties panel has the same function in the schematic editor as in the PCB editor. And in the PCB editor, we call it the PCB list panel. Well, in the schematic editor, there's the schematic list panel. But the function is the same, is to view or edit any object in the uh, schematic or PCB editor. All right, so now it's time for a little demonstration here, and then I'll take some uh, questions here for you, but I've just got a few slides left, right? Remember, the whole highlights here of this slideshow is to show you these are the different selection techniques on the left, and then, well, we have some global editing tools in the properties panel as well, you, where you'll do most of that editing. And then we've got some text replace with a batch replace and formula from the schematic editor, okay? Now, the, again, the PCB list panel allows you to view or edit any of the objects all at once. Because the other methods that we have, like on the left-hand side to select objects, either in the selection filter and the PCB panel and the filter panel, well, those, those panels 
controls allow us to select objects, but we have to edit them in the properties panel. The only other panel that allows you to make those edits, folks, are the PCB list panel. When I first started using Altium Designer, I used the PCB list panel all the time because it lets you view or edit any object set, okay? And you'll see in the schematic editor, everything is so much easier to select. All right, because it, the schematic editor is so wide open, okay? However, what you'll see uh, in the PCB editor, everything is so much more densely populated that it's harder to select things in the main editing area, okay? But for the time, thing, for the time being, I'd like to ask everybody a question. Now, I'm going to launch a polling question, and if you folks could, if you could enter the answer into uh, this question, I'd certainly appreciate it. So how often do you feel the need to simultaneously edit a group of objects? And in this case, if you folks could just uh, enter your answers in here, our marketing group would certainly appreciate that. So I'm going to end the polling for this question and I'll, I'll launch the polling again a little bit later for some other questions as we move along in the webinar. All right, so selecting objects, like I said, in the main editing area is very easy uh, in the schematic editor because everything is so wide open, right? Because in the schematic ed editor, right, it's a theoretical representation of your connections. It's the PCB where it's hard to uh, select things, you see, but underneath the edit menu bar option, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where we have our select menu. And in fact, that select menu is used so often that if you just click in the main editing area and hit S, you'll see that same selection menu. So for example, one right at the top that I started using recently is this lasso select. It's kind of fun. You uh, just sort of, your cursor turns to a crosshair and you just sort of like draw a lasso around the objects that you want to be able to select. And then, of course, if you just click in the main editing area, it'll deselect those objects as well, right? Over here, that's a selecting in the main editing area. See, that's your choice. That's the big choice to make, folks. It's, going, it's all about, do you want to select objects in the main editing area or from a workspace panel? And most of the time in the schematic editor, you've got plenty of room to select the objects you want in the main editing area. It's the PCB editor where everything is so much more densely populated that it's a little bit more difficult to select objects in the main editing area. And that's why we use these other tools like find similar objects in here, okay? But just remember, hey, S is for select. And there are some really cool tools in here, and they both work in the schematic and the PCB editor, okay? So, for example, one of my favorites as well is Select Touching Rectangle. All right, that, that's sort of the, the brother of select inside area. You see, when you draw this selection box from left to right in the main editing area, the selection box is blue. And everything that is completely enclosed within that rectangle will be selected. And then when I just click in the main editing area, it's deselecting. But when I draw a selection rectangle from right to left, the selection rectangle is green. And that means that means edit select touching rectangle. Anything completely enclosed within the rectangle or touching it will be selected. And that can be really uh, helpful for users in, when selecting in the main editing area. Okay, so just remember the S key is your friend. And it also has a brother, deselect. X key, and that's just under the edit menu. You'll see if I just went under the edit menu, edit, there's select, and then deselect. All right, but whatever method of selecting objects you choose, just remember that you still always just have to select an object before you edit it. There's a difference between just highlighting an object and selecting it, okay? So let's go into the PCB editor and take a look at some of these other tools, okay? Like the PCB panel for selecting objects is super handy, right? Up here at the top, you'll see where it says nets. There's this drop-down list, and these are all the object types in Altium Designer. And watch this, you know, nets is up at the top for a reason, because when you select nets, 
Well, it, you'll have the opportunity to select any or all of the primitive objects that make up that net, like tracks and vias and pads. You see, once I select the nets class at the top of the PCB panel, the different net classes within this PCB are presented to me. And here what I did is I just select the 12 mil net class. There's always an all nets class. But in this case, I just created for demo purposes, this 12 mil net class here, okay? And watch this, there's only two nets in that net class. You see that down here? There's five volts in this other net here, and they're just being highlighted now. They're not being selected because I did not check this box yet at the top of the PCB panel. That says select right here. So now when I select that five volt net, now you'll see it, it's very bright in the main editing area there. Do you see that? Okay, so let's take a look at a few other options that we have now for editing those objects. You see, as soon as I selected that five volt net, all of the tracks and arcs and vias and pads that make up that net are, are loaded into this section down here at the bottom. So for example, this is a 12 mil, the name of this net class is 12 mils. Well, that's an intuitive name to tell me what the routing width is, all right? But if I wanted to, I could do a design rule check on that, but I don't even need to do that because the PCB panel is so powerful. Check this out. I'm gonna scroll until I can sort on the type of uh, object type is track. You see that? So I've got all these pads and tracks, but what I want to avoid, what I want to see if any tracks are not 12 mils, like these tracks right here, any of these five mil traces right here, and I can sort on any of these layers so that I can see, oh, these are the tracks on the top layer. Here are the tracks on the bottom layer. And here are those five mil tracks that would be breaking that design rule. So this right here in, in the PCB panel is where I can group select some of those objects that would be breaking that design rule. And in fact, one of the really cool things about the PCB panel while I'm here is that you can sort which columns are, are being presented of information here in, the, in this uh, net section right in here. You can right click in here and just say, oh, what columns do you want to uh, show in here and these primitive objects as well, okay? So you can highlight any of those different objects. See, I'm not showing vias here in this case, all right? But what I can see is that, hey, here are all those five mil tracks on the bottom layer. And if I want, again, I can zoom into that. You see, I'm gonna apply those selections right there and I can see those tracks on the bottom layer would be breaking that design rule. So how would I edit those tracks once they're easily selected? In the properties panel. The way that we'd select the objects may change, but we're always gonna be editing them either in the properties panel or in the PCB list panel, okay? All right, so here's another question that I'd like to ask you folks here in this polling question over here. I'm gonna launch this polling question here and ask this second question that I've got in here, which is what holds you back in using tools for the quick editing of groups of a lot of objects? So I'll give you guys a minute or so to answer those questions and read through. All right, well, I'm gonna end the polling for that question and I'll launch that up a little bit later as well, okay? Because I ha just have two more questions for you later on, okay? All right, so now that I've selected those tracks, how would I edit them? Easy as can be. The properties panel is telling me all about it here on the left-hand side. And I can see in the width row that the width is five mils. If I wanted to change that to 12, just type in 12, enter, done. And I didn't have to type in the mill suffix. Do you see that? I just had to type in the width, that's all. All right, and again, if I wanted to, right click in the, uh, click in the main editing area would deselect that object, but now it's selected a polygon. If I wanted to control Z is my friend. Now clear filter, I'm gonna right click here and clear filter to, to any time that you select anything in the PCB panel, or the PCB filter panel, you've got to clear that filter in the main editing area. So now I'm going to go to the menu bar, view fit board. 
So back here in the properties panel, here's my selection filter in the upper left. You see that? I'm going to collapse these other sections that are in here just so that we can focus on the pre-selection filter. So I'm going to turn everything off. That would mean I can't select anything. So you guys, you got to be really careful in the se selection filter because it's very easy to forget that you turn some things off. So if I turn everything off and then just select tracks, right? I zoom in here, for example, if I wanted to select any specific track in here, right? At this point, what I could do, watch this. If I zoom in, there's a zoom threshold where I can see the name of that net right there. So if I click on that track right there, watch this. Anybody taking notes out there? You might want to get a pencil out for this one. Hit the tab key. That's going to select all track segments that are hooked up just to that layer. Isn't that cool? So that you can just hitting that tab key after you select any object there is very helpful. I'm going to right click and clear a filter and show you another one of my tips and favorite tips and tricks in the main editing area. Just control left click. You see that? It, what it's doing now is it's just highlighting that net. It's not selecting it. It's just highlighting it and masking out the other objects. And I can control that background masking with the open and close square bracket key. See, I can fit the whole board and see all those net sections that are highlighted right there. But control click is a big help sometimes. So I'm going to right click and clear that filter again. All I did is I just zoomed in, all right, and I went control click right there on that via. All right, now when it comes to selecting objects right now, I wouldn't be able to select that via in the main editing area because my pre-selection filter is set to tracks only. So you want to go back in there and make sure that you turn everything back on. And now I'm going to clear filter again. Now, when it comes to selecting vias, by the way, in the main editing area, Watch this, if I go to select this via and I go to click right in the middle, Altium Designer doesn't know what I wanna select because right in the middle, middle of that via is a track on the top layer. It's also connected to a polygon pore, which is nearby. There's a track on the bottom layer and the via itself. So Altium will come up with this little pop-up selection dialog box if it's not sure what you're trying to select in the main editing area. So here's another tip and trick. If you want to select a via in the main editing area, click on the area of the via di diameter outside of the middle right there, okay? Because now it's clear Altium knows I want to just select a via there in the main editing area. It's a very common mistake that people make is that they'll just click right in the middle of a via and Altium doesn't know what you want to select. And, and let, what you have to do is go into that pop-up selection dialog box there. All right, and remember to right click, uh, clear filter, shift C, and now I'm just going to hit VF to fit that board, okay? So let's take a look at a few of the other tools that we have to select and edit objects in here. I mentioned earlier that you could also select objects in the PCB filter panel. And that's certainly an option for you, but first you have to open the PCB filter panel. I've already got it open here and it's docked vertically along the left-hand side along with some other panels that I've got over here. So you'll see that the PCB filter panel employs a query language that is also used by the design rules in the PCB. And one of the handy things about the PCB filter panel is that it helps you get used to using that query language and that you can use it to uh, create a PCB design rule right from here. So the idea is that you can, I'm gonna just delete this query right in here, but the whole point is that you can uncheck uh, all of these boxes at first here. I just hit uncheck all and it fills up this filter panel, not all. You'll see that and you could say, all right, I want to select every track that belongs to a specific net and I want to select it on the bottom layer. You see that? And then it says, end in the net. I want to specific, uh, specifically tell it to select the bottom layer tracks on the for the five volt net. So I'm going to just paste that at the back. I just wanted to highlight this. And as I backspace here, watch this. I'm going to say in net. 
And all I have to do in the PCB filter panel, folks, is to just start typing in the query language and it'll bring up any of the filters uh, to help me out with that query language. So for example, I just said in net and it brought up a menu of every net in the PCB. And at this point now, I just make sure the select box is checked in the lower left and click apply to all and it just selected every track that belongs to the five volt net on the bottom layer. And now that they're all selected, I could go into the properties panel where I change the width. And if you look at the width field next to my cursor right now, there's an asterisk key. And the asterisk is there because there are multiple values of these track widths. But as soon as I click my cursor in here, it's gonna populate with one of those values. You see that five mil? So now if I just type 12, enter, boom, done. That's it. That's, honestly, I think that one of the greatest strengths of Altium Designer is its ability to be able to quickly select objects and quickly edit them. It's definitely one of the strengths of the tool. <clears throat> and of course, any edits that you make in any of the workspace panels can be easily undone just with Control Z or Edit Undo. You see there's undo button right at the top and it just changed the track widths in here. If you wanted to see a, while they're still selected a more dramatic display, you could go right back in here into the properties panel if you wanted to and redo that. Okay, now we have redo. In fact, now that they're all selected, I could go right back in here if you wanted to see more of a dramatic effect that you can see very easily. All right, there's just 50 mils right there. I definitely want to undo that that would probably be a few design rule violations. So now I just hit undo again, and it brought it back to its original five mil width, okay? And right click and clear filter and view fit all objects once again. Now we've talked about some of the different ways to select objects in the properties panel with the selection filter. In the PCB panel by selecting nets, I could have also gone to components or any of these other objects if I wanted to as well. We also talked about how to select objects in the PCB filter panel with a combination of either checking some of these boxes here or if you wanted to, you could just type right in there. You see that in net? And now I could just select that net right there if I wanted to. And, but now this would select all objects, uh, uh, all the tracks for that net. If I just hit apply to all at this point, now that's just all track segments for that net. So you can more specifically qualify it in the PCB panel, okay? All right, let me clear filter again. Victor Foxtrot view fit board. And now it's time for another polling question here, folks. Let me launch this up here for you and ask you if you would be so kind. In your opinion, are there enough tools for the quick editing of groups of objects in Altium Designer? So if you could please take a, take a look at some of those different answers and provide our marketing department with some good feedback, please. All right, terrific. I'm going to end the polling here. And I'm going to ask one final question in here. We're getting close to the end of our uh, webinar. There are still a few other things I'm going to show you, specifically the PCB list panel, which allows us to view or edit any of the objects in there. But hopefully this webinar was helpful for you. The whole key, remember guys, it's all about selecting objects. And in the schematic editor, it's real easy to select stuff in the main editing area, but in the PCB where things are a lot more crowded, it's a, it can be a little bit more challenging, right? So for example, that pop-up selection dialog box that comes up when I tried to select a via, if you don't see that pop up, and I, saw, I just saw a question come in <clears throat> to the question and answer period, uh, there's a little dialog box for question and answer. Please use that instead of the chat window for any questions that you might have. <clears throat> because that I'll show you where that pop-up selection dialog option is in preferences. In preferences in the PCB editor branch underneath the general page, look at that, there's this little box that you can check and it's not checked by default. It says display pop-up selection dialog box. And this way, hey, when Altium doesn't know what you wanna select, that's what's gonna happen. You'll see that little pop-up selection dialog box come in. So hopefully that answered your question. 
All right, now the most powerful uh, panel of all perhaps is the PCB list panel. So let me bring that up here. Now again, the PCB list panel, you'll see at the bottom of my main editing area, it already came up docked horizontally. You see that? I, if you ever have a panel that's got more than say five columns in it, I'd highly recommend that you set the docking for horizontally because then you see more stuff in it, right? And of course you put those panels in pop out mode if you want to ma maximize the real estate in the main editing area. In the upper left of the PCB list panel, what you'll see is that you can go to view or edit mode and then you've got also some other scope settings for selected objects, all objects, non-masked objects, and you can s display the exact object type that you want. Watch this, if I depress this radio button called display all objects and just click okay, look at this in the PCB list panel, it's going to display every item. Look at that, 11,174 objects that are in there. So you can scope this out completely the way that you want. So you want to find out, you know, for example, how many pad vias are in the design or pads, all right? For example, I'm going to just check via down here. You see that? So I click OK, 298 vias in this board. And you can edit them right here, view or edit mode. Like it says that the whole size is 11.811. That's probably translating to a metric measurement of some sort. Watch this, if I click in the main editing area and I hit the Q shortcut key, well, that just changes the units from uh, imperial to metric. So now I can see that that whole size is 0 0.3 millimeters. And that's that Q shortcut key. And all of the information for that X, Y uh, position of all the objects as well changes instantly. So that's something that you'd be able to change quickly. That's in the properties panel, by the way, just uh, uh, on the grid manager as well. You'll see this, that's where you change the grid and stuff like that. It's the other section down at the bottom that's got uh, metric and imperial. And look at that, that, they give you that little Q shortcut key in there. But one thing you have to be careful of when you're playing in panels, if, if you're only on one monitor like I am, is to keep those panels in pop out mode, right? So that you can maximize the real estate in your main editing area. All right, folks, well, that's gonna be the end of my webinar. I don't see any uh, uh, other questions coming in. I'll stick around for some other questions that'll come up here and answer them as they come in. But I'd like to thank everybody, certainly for attending the webinar. I hope it was helpful for you to learn how to quickly select and then quickly edit groups of objects effortlessly in Altium Designer.